Rick, first of all, congratulations on an amazing okay. flight. Yeah, it was a great start. Uh, flown as brief, basically. Had to deal with some weather issues. Uh, we worked uh, winds. Uh, we would prefer to dr go off a 3.6, but uh, met our requirements to hop over to 1.8. Uh, no big deal there. Uh, cloud layers were a little lower than we desired, but we had a backup plan for that. Uh, able to keep it under that and uh, show off... Uh, a nice show for the folks, and the clouds provide a nice backdrop for that rocket engine. So I hear. I've never seen it from that perspective, though. <laughs> from our perspective, it looked great. Yeah, and uh, in the cockpit, too. Everything uh, just was spectacular. The engine operated well. A little bit of a glitch on the runway with a uh, technical issue on the chill down, but uh, we brought the team over, conferred for a moment or two, you probably saw, uh, cycled the switch, gave it another shot, worked great, and off we went. Our philosophy at x -Corps is to always have an out. Assume at any second in the profile it could turn into a glider. It's still a developmental project with the engine. And so because of that, uh, you plan it very, very carefully. And I don't think I've ever been happier to see the number 27 in my life as I <laughs> saw the 27 second point when we got past where we knew we could get swung back around to runway 27 as a piece of cake. Uh, the board options before that are not ideal. They're acceptable, but not ideal. Uh, so you worry the details to death, and then when everything works great, you just have fun up there. I mean, it was spectacular to get up there and see all the ground references just as I had planned, see the energy state, this combination of speed and altitude fall right into uh, the bounds of what I expected, and then to uh, do each subsequent maneuver uh, right on the numbers, and it was uh, a lot of fun. Cirrus aircraft have always been easy to fly. Now they're easier than ever to buy. A complete line of ownership programs gives you everything you need to purchase, trade, finance, lease, insure, and warranty your Cirrus. There's even an ownership program for non-pilots. The Cirrus Access Pilot can teach you how to fly or fly the plane for you. Find out more at www.cirrusdesign.com. Cirrus, for the love of flying. We're flying here at Oshkosh with shorter length runways at our Civilian Flight Test Center in Mojave, California. Uh, you don't have as much luxury as you do out there for a number of uh, different cases. Uh, so you have to, as I talked about before, really plan carefully for that. Uh, but uh, it, at the same time, you know, what better venue to fly and show this off to the public are you going to get than Oshkosh? So it was this great combination of the great support, resources, vision from Rocket Racing League, uh, from Bridenstine and DKNY to pull the resources together to do this, to, to uh, make this vehicle, then the technical expertise with x to put it together, the operational expertise that I bring to the table working with the uh, rocket engineers uh, to figure out how we can do this safely and still show it off. Now uh, this flight was exactly the way I like them. It was boring as good. It went according to the profile, flown as briefed, you can't act, ask for something better. At the same time, so they tell me, it looked pretty good from the ground. Uh, we're very well positioned now for the uh, flights Friday and Saturday to uh, ramp it up a notch or two. Uh, still very benign maneuvers in the aircraft, maneuvers we've practi practiced extensively uh, that we've been, as a team, vetted to, uh, to do, and as an individual pilot, I've been vetted to do by, you know, uh, one of the very, very best in the world, Sean Tucker, who looked over our routine and how we did business down at, uh, uh, at Mojave and gave us the thumbs up. And so we're going to really put on a nice show on Friday and Saturday, I believe, that will highlight the capabilities of the aircraft, point out to people that when, when we begin to race these, when Rocket Re Racing League goes into full operation and we see airplanes with DKNY and other sponsors, I would imagine, uh, all over the sky, uh, that it will be done safely uh, by technically proficient and top-notch crews and really this melding or this uh, combination of, uh, of the thrill of racing the technology which comes from space technology 
uh, the operational expertise, which comes from test pilots, fighter pilots, uh, racing pilots uh, that are all playing into this mix, all stirred up together in the pot to do something unique and very, very new and interesting. Sunny or cloudy, rainy or bright, day or night, the future of flying is now clearly in sight. Garmin SBT, synthetic vision technology. You know, uh, it's not too much of a jump in terms of scalability or operational concepts to go from this vehicle to a suborbital vehicle. And as far as XCOR is concerned, the technology development on this project has been spectacular for us. And even on my part of view, the developing the flight test philosophies and the operations and how we do that to transition it to operational, this has been a great learning project as well. So we're, we're proceeding down a, a both forks, you know, when you hit to a, uh, get to a fork in the road, which one do you take? Both. Yeah. That's what we're doing here because uh, in development for the Rocket Racing League, uh, this technology, these vehicles will go on better and better and better. I mean, this has been a great little vehicle, but there's a whole heck of a lot of things we can do better with it as we move from prototype to operational. We'll have a much better uh, cockpit layout in terms of uh, visibility, you know, even a bubble canopy potentially, and a whole lot of other things without getting into details that we can continue to improve on. At the same time, we've taken this uh, engine and developed something that uh, it's not too much of a stretch to see four of these strapped together on board X-Corps Lynx vehicle taking people to the edge of space. We'll have to boost some performance. We'll have to continue to develop it over a couple of years. But its granddaddy, if not its daddy, is going to be the engine that propels uh, the Bridenstine DKNY rocket racer. I've never been to Oshkosh before. First flight I ever made at Oshkosh was with a rocket racer. My background is almost exclusively military. I've got some light aircraft and soaring experience. Uh, but what attracted me to this project, of course, was the space connection, the potential to bring my background and skills to bear to help uh, this team get to space. But to be here at this, this cradle of, uh, of home-built aviation, the home of EAA at, at Oshkosh, is just, you know, it's a dream come true to come here and hop in a rocket plane and uh, blast off of Oshkosh 18 right and go fly. And, and think about it. I didn't have to, uh, you know, if you're the little rocket plane out here, wag your wings. I didn't have to do any of that. I just called up Airbus and went and flew. <laughs> so it was great. You want it? Yeah.